entertained by the great professional symphony orchestras are both expected and taken for granted. Even so, few people realize that a vast amount of individual study and practice and many hours of rehearsals are necessary before each public performance. For a group of teenage high school boys and girls to be able to give consistently fine performances of the great symphonic masterworks seems almost incredible. Those fortunate people who have visited the National Music Camp at Interlochen, the heart of the great northern Michigan vacation country, know that the seemingly impossible is a weekly occurrence there. Every summer, hundreds of high school music students from all parts of the country come to the summer workshop of the National Music Camp for eight weeks of study and play. With the guidance of our country's finest conductors, composers, and artist instructors, a different symphonic program is rehearsed and performed by the National High School Orchestra at the public concert given each week in the famous Interlochen Bowl. And now, we invite you to watch and listen while youth builds a symphony. A comprehensive music library is a very necessary part of the equipment of any good orchestra. Housed in a fireproof building, the National Music Camp Library contains over 5,000 titles, including masterworks for orchestra, band, choir, and all types of ensembles. Long before the orchestra gathers for rehearsals, trained librarians have been busy sorting the instrumental parts of the scores which have been selected for the week's program. The activities each day begin with the raising of the American flag. Rehearsals of the new programs are usually conducted by Dr. Joseph E. Matty, President and Musical Director of the camp. Sunday you're to play the Romantic Symphony by Howard Hanson. Dr. Hanson began this symphony here at Interlochen way back in 1928. As you all know, our National Music Camp radio theme is taken from the work. As usual, let's start our rehearsal by playing the entire symphony through at sight without stopping regardless of mistakes. Let's go. Many rehearsals are recorded on the camp's high-fidelity transcription equipment and then played back over the stage speaker system so that the orchestra may study and correct its mistakes. Frequently, for comparison, the same score, professionally recorded, is taken from the large library of standard records and also played. And now, back to the stage. After full orchestra rehearsal, the various sections meet for further study in their buildings and classrooms or group out of doors at convenient locations in the beautiful grounds of the camp. Each section is guided by an artist instructor selected from the major symphonies, universities, and music schools of America. Let's visit with some of the sections while they are working on portions of the Hanson Chromatic Symphony. Once more, seven bars after K.
the sections composing the string choir of the orchestra are practicing as a group. All right, folks, if you want to get the right rhythm, you have to borrow the track there, which is two downs and two up bows. I'll show us how, Dick. That's right, you got it all, folks? Now we're all playing it that way. There we go. That's from two before end. Then they, too, break up into the section groups. section rehearsals, many students take private lessons or go into individual practice. Almost anywhere, almost any time, they practice. Practice because they love it and are striving for perfection and a higher place in the first chair tryouts. The method of holding weekly competitions in each section for first chair honors, which includes the playing of solo parts, is one of the interesting contributions to musical education promoted by the National Music Camp. And this is how it works. We have a tryout. Start five measures after M. You start it, Dick.
students find time for many other musical activities. The choir, directed by Maynard Klein, director of choirs at Tulane University, appears in programs ranging from church services, cantatas, and concerts to the presentation of operettas. National Music Camp Symphonic Band has a program which parallels that of the orchestra. It is conducted by Walter Welke, band director at the University of Washington at Seattle. Ready, class? Six in a bar. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Budding directors are trained by Guy Fraser Harrison, popular conductor of the Rochester Civic Orchestra. Four, five, six. All right, that's enough. Then we come to the problem of the dotted note as we have it in Country Gardens. Mr. Lobach, will you play the beginning of Country Gardens for us? Heading the piano department is Percy Granger, prominent soloist and composer. Yes, but what we have there is a triplet. We don't have the have the, the division into four as we should. It ought to count right for the metronome, counting four to each beat. One, Then when you're used to counting and playing with the metronome, you turn the metronome off and simply think the counting. You know, Mr. Waters, I like this piece very much. Uh, and in fact, it has great possibilities for orchestra. And I'll play it uh, just the way you compose it. This class in orchestration is taught by Ferdy Grofe, noted American composer. Uh, you know, it, I get this uh, idea of the... First, let's uh, give it to the lower strings in unison. That'll be an octave uh, down this way to here. And with the uh, proper support of the horns and uh, woodwind. You remember the other day we uh, discussed that more in detail? We had the close position. Of the Students at the camp have their own fine orchestra directed by Guy Fraser Harrison. The members may earn credit towards degrees at the University of Michigan or for transfer to other institutions. The dance department, under the direction of Hildegard Lewis, instructor in modern dance, University of Wichita, offers regular classes in ballet, character, social dancing, and the modern dance. The course emphasizes body conditioning and includes the study of costume and stage design. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of green. 
gray for purple mountain majesty above the sea. The radio drama workshop, with its completely equipped studios, gives students valuable training in many phases of radio work, including the production of original plays, script writing, program building, microphone technique, and actual broadcasting experience. Physical fitness is stressed at the National Music Camp. Every student's schedule contains definite hours for exercise and for the games that musicians may safely play. All activities are carefully supervised by trained experts from the University of Michigan Physical Education Department. And the health of each camper is carefully checked and maintained by the resident camp physician and the full-time registered nurses. The camp property consists of 150 buildings situated on a campus of 500 acres of woodland, lying between and bordering on two lakes right in the heart of the famous Grand Traverse Vacation and Resort region of northern Michigan. The clean, cool air, the brilliant sunshine, and the clear, sparkling lakes and streams make this an ideal location for work and play. Qualified lifeguards teach every camper how to swim before the season's over, and many complete the standard life-saving courses. Canoeing is deservedly popular, and the camp owns dozens of these graceful craft. Were any incentive needed to persuade beginners to learn to swim, it could well be the fact that only those who pass the qualifying swimming tests are permitted to enter the canoes and boats. The many lakes dotting this section of the country make sailing a very popular sport. And the students are fortunate indeed to have the use of this graceful craft, the glissando. It has been assigned to the camp by the Michigan Board in Control of Vocational Education. Miles of shaded woodland trails beckon those who love horseback riding, and good mounts at special rates are available at nearby stables. When a labor shortage threatened the harvesting of cherry crops, which are so important to this section of Michigan, National Music Campers volunteered to help in their spare time, with the result that many an extra lug of cherries found its way to the market. A thrilling ride in sandmobiles is an unforgettable experience for those who visit the world-famous Sleeping Bear Dune, which stretches for miles along Lake Michigan. Scenes of rare beauty are forgotten for the moment as the campers frolic in the soft, deep sand. This looks like a treasure hunt, but one would never guess what they are digging for right in the blazing sun of a hot August afternoon. Of all things, ice. Yet, the explanation is simple. The deep snows of the northern winter filled in the gullies, which were then covered by the ever-shifting sands, which provided a layer of insulating material, thus creating this natural ice box. Of course, there is fishing, and what fishing? The streams and lakes abound with hungry fish, just waiting to be caught by any fisherman smarter than they are. They grow big here, too, for this prize-winning seven-pound brown trout was caught in the nearby Platte River on a dry fly by no less than Dr. Matty himself. There must be magic in music. Another thrill awaits in Grand Traverse Bay, inland deep-sea fishing. In sturdy cabin cruisers, Parties are taken to deep water where the big ones lurk. Working in approved deep sea style and using hundreds of feet of copper line, it means work, and we mean real work, to bring the cats to the landing net. But wouldn't you consider these well worth the effort? And now, back to the camp. Every year, several nationally known conductors and composers visit Interlaken, each working for a week or longer with the students. Loaned to the camp by the Army is Warrant Officer Thor Johnson, formerly director of the University of Michigan Symphony Orchestra and the Ann Arbor May Festival. One of the 
busiest members of the faculty, Mr. Granger frequently finds time to conduct. This time, his own composition, Harvest Hymn. He also appears as a soloist on a number of the concerts and is here rehearsing the Thalius Concerto for Piano and Orchestra with Warrant Officer Thor Johnson conducting. American music and American musicians are featured at the National Music Camp. Here the celebrated American composer, Ferdy Grofay, conducts his most famous composition. Many of Mr. Grofay's works were performed for the first time at Interlochen. Here is the first performance in the making. George Frederick McKay, professor of music theory at the University of Washington, Seattle, and a member of the camp faculty, is rehearsing his suite of old fiddler's tunes. Novel orchestrations are sometimes performed at Interlochen. Percy Granger conducts a tuneful percussion group using regular symphony orchestra instruments played in such a way as to give an impression of a Japanese gamelan orchestra. And now Dr. Joseph E. Matty, president of the National Music Camp wishes to extend an invitation. You have been visiting the National Music Camp in Interlochen, Michigan, and have witnessed a small part of one week's activities in the process of building a symphony. The routine of the camp is planned to inspire and stimulate musical progress. New techniques are tried and proven, then adopted and spread from Interlochen to the school systems of America. Through 16 years of prosperity and depression, through peace and war, the National Music Camp has grown steadily. It has proven its worth in the educational field as the only place in the world where great symphonies are mastered week by week by teenage youth in an atmosphere charged with idealism and enthusiasm. We invite you to visit Interlochen personally and partake of the musical magic which you may have glimpsed in this picture of youth building a symphony. And now, after a week's diligent study, the National Music Camp's high school orchestra plays the final portion of the Romantic Symphony under the direction of its composer, Dr. Howard Hanson. 